If you are currently leveling up your Django and Postgres skills with this tutorial, you might like to know that this tutorial is part of a whole playlist where you will learn how to, with Django and Postgres, create database level constraints and triggers. If you like this playlist and you would like to learn more about Django ORM, then do check out our Django ORM Mastery course on Udemy. Links to the playlist and course can be found in the video description. Managing credentials with environment variables is a widely adopted practice in application development and deployment due to the key benefits over just having your password set in clear text within your code. If we take a look at our source code, we have already included username and passwords within the source code. And we do want to try and keep this sensitive information out of the source code, thus reducing the risk of accidental exposure through version control systems or just making it easily available to anyone who accesses our code. So we're going to initially be leveraging environment variables for managing credentials within our project or any sensitive information, which is going to help us enhance or work towards enhance the security, flexibility and maintainability of our application. Because not only are we lifting out sensitive information, but we're pl placing it all in one place where we can easily manage those credentials for our whole project. If you're new to environment variables, just very briefly, what are environment variables? Well, environment variables are typically key value pairs that are set at the operating system level. So this being our operating system, somewhere within our operating system, we would have our environment variables, which we would create our key value pairs. So in this case, we have, for example, the PG database, uh, username. So we would then define that as whatever it is. So we would set that, we would set that environment variable and that anywhere within our operating system, we can call that environment variable. In our case, of course, it's in our Django project or potentially in the Docker compose file. And then we can utilize those within our project. Other than security, this also allows for greater flexibility because we can use the same code base and deploy it in different environments, which potentially have different settings in those environments. So if we deploy in the development environment, we might have a development database that's going to require set, a different set of username and passwords. If we then deploy that code base directly in our production environment, Again, that will have a, a completely different database. So we'll require a different set of environment variables, but our code base would stay the same. So here's a little bit of a, a script to just show you the fact that we can set up environment variables from the terminal in our operating system. And this is going to be different on Windows and Mac and Linux, but just to show you this as an example. So here, what I've done is I've created an environment variable. In this case, just a temporary for the current session. I can go ahead and create a more permanent environment variables, uh, adding it to the shell configuration files if I wanted to. And that's what I've done there. And then when I want to access them, I go ahead and use echo, specify the variable name, in this case, var name, and then that will then return whatever value we've set in the environment variable. So here you can see an example of me actually setting environment variables on my operating system. So although it is actually possible for us to set up environment variables in the terminal, we don't necessarily want to do that because that's going to be quite a messy and complicated setup if we are running multiple projects and so on. So what we can do is go into our project. Let's create a new file here called .env. So first of all, with Docker, what we're going to find is that Docker will use the .env file to load any environment variables that can be used within our Docker Compose file. So these environment variables can be configured with various settings, uh, database, username, passwords, and so on. So we're going to be utilizing this file to set up our environment variables for this project. So let's go ahead and now remove the environment variables here from our Docker Compose file. And we're just going to specify the fact we're using an environment variable file. So we just need to specify env env file 
and then we go ahead and this is going to be again relative to the place where the docker compose file is in our directory so you can see the env file is in the same in the same directory as the docker compose file so here we just specify dot the same location slash and then dot env okay so that's going to find the env file and the load all the environment variables or variables from there so now we can actually go ahead and specify uh, some environment variables so what we're going to need here is some key values so let's go back into well actually i've removed them already so uh, what we're going to need here is postgres user that's going to equal postgres and notice there's no single or double quotes here on the string it's simply just the actual username and then we can define the password same again so key value there we go right so in the docker compose file we don't have to do anything this is just going to be all loaded in because we specified an emv file so that's the username and password right so to actually load in environment variables for our django application we're going to need to do something slightly different so let's go over to the settings here first right so there are different packages for us in python for us to perform similar operations we're going to be utilizing python.env which is a package that you will find here in the python package index which allows us to load environment variables from an emv file into our application now generally we utilize this in development and we will have a different solution if and when we start to deploy this into our production server so let's go ahead and install oh, that didn't quite work did it so let's go ahead and install this pip install python.env so i just go ahead and pip freeze or update the requirements we're not in the right directory so i'll just change directory back up to where the requirements file is and do that again pip freeze okay and then we go back into our project okay so that is it the that's a uh, python.env installed so now what we can do inside of our settings file in our core we just need to bring or activate the extension the package apologies thinking and talking not my strength so let's go ahead now and actually import that in so from .env let's import uh, load.env which is going to be the method that we use to actually load the environment variables and then we just need to initiate it so load.env that's going to load all the environment variables from the env file if we were to remove if we were to move around the env file we would need to specify the path and we would include that right there so with that done that should be pretty much all that we need to do at that point to load all of our environment variables we are going to need to specify a few more of course so let's just quickly load all this up db name uh, we're going to need db uh, user uh, db password db host and our database port okay so those are all the environment variables that we're going to pass into our settings file obviously we just need to quickly populate those so inventory uh, postgres postgres 127 it says just the same as what we have already defined in the settings file just moving those across here to the environment variable file and you can see how that generic that's going to be in that if we were to move the source code now somewhere we have all the settings here that we can apply for that particular environment right so we need to also be careful the way that currently we're loading in these environment variables into docker we might find that if we were to accidentally use an environment variable which is uh, defined in the postgres database default image we might have issues there so i have specifically named them so that isn't the case at the moment because we're we're just using one file it might be that we should utilize a single file for uh, our django application and a single file for uh, docker but we're just trying to add everything at the moment all into one place right so with that done let's go back to settings and what we'll need to do is make those changes right here so we just need to 
we need to get the environment of variables. Now, to get the environment of variables, we're going to need um, to import OS so that we can use the get env function and get the environment variable. So we import OS, apologies, so we're scrolling down. And now we can go ahead and start to change this up. So name now becomes os.get uh, env. So that's the function that we're going to use to actually get the environment variable by name. In this case, it's going to be name. There we go. So that's how we're going to work to get all of our environment variables. So we can bring all that in. Don't forget the comma. And there we go. So we've now swapped everything over to environment variables. So back in AdMiner, I have already deleted my database and recreated it. So I can now test to see if my new settings is working by running a migration. So making sure that I'm in the right place. Yeah, I'm in my project with a manage.py. So I'm just going to run the migrate command to test to see if this works. And you can see it does look like it has been applied. If I do a refresh in AdMiner, all the tables return. Good. So that just indicates the fact that I have successfully updated the settings with the new environment variables. They are working correctly. So I'll just go ahead and drop my database and recreate it. So let's just double check the, the Docker side. So if I go ahead and just delete my containers and then all the volumes, let's just rerun this again. So back in the command prompt, I'm going to run the docker compose up with the D flag. So it looks like everything has started. If I look back in Docker desktop, I can see the containers. They are all back and running. They are all green. I can then go and add miner, do a refresh. I should have to log in again. You can see that the inventory database has now been added. And there we go. So it looks like everything is working as intended. Now, if you do have any errors, it's likely to be the code is incorrect. You can download the source code. It should be at the start of this uh, module. Have a look at the source code, make sure everything aligns up and everything should be fine. If you do have any other problems, just leave a message and I'll try and get back to you. Right, so we now have a basic framework for creating and then connecting our Django application to a Postgres database. As we work through this course, no doubt we will add different layers of complexity. So like I keep suggesting, it's well worth your time just spending a little bit of time now practicing what we've just done, making sure that you're familiar with that process as we get deeper into the course. Like I keep saying, it's going to make it easier for you to follow along.